we're just getting out and having a picnic. Yep. We just needed to be outside. It's been a long week. <laughs> I love the city of Boise because it's just such a, a comfortable and enjoyable place to live. There's The people here are so kind and generous. I love Boise because it's peaceful. And I like how it's so clean here compared to back home. Well, this is the place where I met my now fiance <laughs> and just got engaged to her. So this is so fun. She's from here. We went to Boise State. And so we just love the, you know, we love the town. We love the place, love the people here. and and ask for a better experience. Down to earth, just super nice people here. We're from Iraq originally. We came here in 2001. Yeah, my dad got accepted and we came down here and we've been here ever since. I love Boise because everyone is so nice here and it's so clean and beautiful. And I love Boise because of the access to nature. I mean, you can drive 15 minutes and be in the mountains or go to a park or yeah. It's beautiful. I ride from my house to Lucky Peak and back about a 50 mile trip every weekend. And that's a good green belt too. Everything's so close, you know, you can get up to McCall and do a good weekend and be back Monday for work. And just being so small, you know, going from downtown, walking downtown, feeling safe downtown, so much easier than going to a bigger city. I love Boise. I love Boise. Well, I'm an Idaho native and I've lived in Boise all my life. I've always lived in Boise. Yeah. Just love Boise. Yeah. I actually moved here uh, with the intention of raising a family. It's a nice, safe place, good schools, yeah, and a lot to do. I don't know. It's perfect. It's just nowhere I would rather live. Welcome. I'm Bill Connors, President and CEO of the Boise Metro Chamber of Commerce. This event is presented by Idaho Central Credit Union and Payne West Insurance and is sponsored by Albertsons, Blue Cross of Idaho, Gardner Company, Micron Technology, St. Alphonse's Health System, and the University of Idaho, Boise, as well as these contributing sponsors. This year marks the 30th anniversary of the State of the City Address the Chamber appreciates the partnership we have with the City of Boise, and a special thank you to Mayor McLean for keeping this great tradition going. And now, please welcome local students to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic to which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello, and welcome to the 30th Annual State of the City. I am Charlene Marr, President and CEO of Blue Cross of Idaho. Today, I am here as the Chair of the Boise Metro Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber is dedicated to helping Boise and the Boise business community. This year has challenged us all in ways none of us could have anticipated. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced us to think and act differently. The Chamber has continued its mission and found new ways to support those businesses in recent months. The team set forth and created informative video series discussing the CARES Act, Rebound Idaho Grants, and Small Business Disaster Relief. Bill Connors, Matt Erpelding, and the Chamber staff have hosted many live events on the Chamber's Facebook page, including forums with our legislative leaders, check-ins with the metro area businesses, and a discussion on the future of broadband in the Treasure Valley. Your chamber is here for you. If you have questions or need resources, call us. We are happy to help. Boise is gifted with a history of great civic service. The latest in that distinguished line is Mayor Lauren McLean, the first woman ever elected to serve as Boise's mayor. Mayor McLean campaigned with the goals of a city powered by clean, renewable energy and a commitment to openness in government. I had the privilege of meeting with Mayor McLean early on. We had the opportunity to speak of those issues of most concern to her on behalf of Boise. That now seems so long ago. Who knew she would quickly have to face a global pandemic? 
Mayor McLean quickly took steps to safeguard the health and well-being of our friends and neighbors by working to slow the spread of COVID-19. It is a challenge I am sure she never expected to face, but also one that defines public service. Doing well for Boise is personal to Mayor McLean. It is for her family, her friends, her neighbors, and her community. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Lauren McLean to deliver her inaugural State of the City Address. Hello, Boise. This isn't the way I expected to deliver our first State of the City, but then again, none of us expected to be doing anything this way. So rather than being in person with all of you in an auditorium, I'm here at our library at Colon Eustick, a place that truly embodies where we're at right now and where we're going. These books tell our stories. They hold our hopes and dreams, our future and our past. As these books rest poised on shelves waiting to be browsed, it may feel like our dreams are also on a shelf just out of reach, waiting. But our library services haven't stopped. They're just delivered a little differently. So too, our dreams haven't changed. We just have to reimagine how we reach them. COVID changed so much so quickly. Many of us are still at home to protect our health or the health of our loved ones. So many of our businesses needed to close their doors at some point and then drastically change how they did business when they opened. So many kids aren't getting the education they deserve and too many parents are struggling with teaching their children and caring for them while they work from home. Many of us canceled weddings, passed up graduations and missed birthdays to ensure we could all celebrate those times together in safer, better days. It's not fair and I know you've done your part. I know you've put on your mask, you've safely distanced, and you've done it for months. I know you want this to be over. I want this to be over. It pains me to see closed signs, to have people asking for help without anyone to hear their pleas, hear stories of sons and daughters unable to hug their grandparents. This pandemic hurts all of us, but it hurts each of us uniquely. Your pain, the sorrow you sometimes feel, the helplessness that can sometimes creep in isn't unfounded and you aren't alone. I sometimes find myself getting frustrated that we can't just make COVID-19 go away by the force of our will. That very will that won World War II and put a man on the moon, but we can't. And just wanting it to will not make it true. We have to act. And what will beat this is something we have an abundance of here in Boise, community. As I run through our neighborhoods and our foothills, I see persistence, the generosity, the patience and caring, the very community that will get us through this. I see people dropping off groceries for neighbors in need. I see the healthy mowing the lawns of the vulnerable. I see people talking in masks, checking in on their neighbors, making sure they're okay. We might be physically distanced, but this is drawing us closer. We're hoping harder and wanting more. If we can tackle these challenges, which we will, we can do anything and urgent dreams won't be put on hold forever. Our libraries are a great example. We've refused to shut down fully. The books still find eager eyes and hungry minds because we know now more than ever, we need it. We've had quite a year, Boise, and as your mayor, I am here to talk with you directly about what's happened and where we're headed. We know what matters, our families, our ability to build a life, our neighbors, this community. Nine months ago, I raised my hand to be sworn in as the 56th mayor of Boise and the first elected woman to serve in this role. The chambers were packed to capacity and we gathered strength and optimism and hope from each other. I looked out and felt a sense of wonder, that hope and a deep sense of gratitude as I saw your faces and those of children like my own son and daughter who wouldn't without you have known that after a century and a half, a woman in Idaho would be elected mayor of its largest city. And something that had never been done before felt routine because of you. 
I felt that same wonder when I first saw our city flying in over the foothills as the winter day was waning and the snow-capped hills sparkled against that orange alpine glow amidst the sea of grass. My husband and I had a simple dream of finding a good job, a safe and clean place to raise a family and a community to build a life and find meaning. I was inspired, excited to dig deep into this remarkable place. It was our dream, but it was an everyday dream a Boise dream, an American dream. That dream is shared by everyone who sets foot in the city of trees, no matter who you are or where you come from. Back in those chambers that night, we didn't know what was to come, nor could we have. Less than three months into office, we were hit with one of the worst pandemics this country has ever seen. But I knew we'd face the challenges it brought courageously together and come through this stronger than before. I knew our great staff at the city of Boise were capable of anything. And over the past few months, they've proven it. Every day they get out of bed and work hard for you because they know every phone call, every innovation, and every service they provide moves us forward. I knew our city council was up to the challenge too. How could they not be? Led by council president Clegg, President Pro Tem Woodings, Council Members Thompson, Sanchez, Bajan, and Hallie Burton, they share our dream. And with every Zoom call, work session, and digital city council meeting, they prove they're committed to a better life for every resident. Our challenges are many and great, but our community responds. You inspire me. And to get through this stronger and more resiliently, protecting the things we love most about our community we must remember what we're fighting for, the simple dream of building a life and being part of something bigger than ourselves. This shared purpose brings us together, unites us in common cause, and will be the foundation of our community as we move forward, stronger from the challenges we've met. You were there in March when during those dark, cold days of winter, Boise became the first city in Idaho to pass a public health order closing City Hall. We then announced that bars and restaurants would close. And in anticipation of the governor's stay home order, we asked ourselves what more we could do in partnership with members of our community to make sure the needs of our most vulnerable were met and the health of our residents protected. We recognize these would be very tough days, but the problem wouldn't go away if we ignored it. We were blessed to have purpose, to have you as a partner. We came together in common cause against uncommon dilemmas. Essential workers went out and met the virus head on, bravely providing services to all of us. Some of us stayed home, holding the illness at bay. We developed partnerships to help us deliver services and protect our residents. We knew that if we made tough choices, our community would recover faster and stronger. We did what was right. To those whose livelihoods were impacted by these closures, I thank you. I know that this was so terribly tough on you. You waited and waited for unemployment benefits. You waited for assistance, some of which is still yet to arrive. We as a country and state can do better. To those whose jobs required you to be on the front lines, protecting our residents, caring for our sick, I thank you. These times highlight the sacrifices that first responders and medical professionals make to protect our health and safety every day. We're a better city because you call this home. I'm proud of the people of this city and the partnerships we forged. People like Jonathan Amissa, who came to Boise as a refugee, saw that his fellow Boiseans were in need and decided to use a hidden skill he hadn't used since he was in Africa, sewing. He brought knowledge across the ocean and used it for the benefit of his community right here in Idaho. At first, he made 10 to 15 masks and four plastic barriers for medical transport drivers. Then he got ambitious and distributed over 100 masks to refugees like him who were frontline workers and over 400 masks to neighbors, patients, and those most vulnerable in the Treasure Valley. I'm proud of institutions like the Interfaith Sanctuary who partnered with the city to help ensure that our homeless would not be forced into the cold. Together, we found roofs for over 200 families. We kept those that tested positive house safely, 
We kept those who were medically fragile housed safely, and we kept our vulnerable inside and safe through innovative partnerships. Treefort, showing how much they cared about our community, called off their festival before we'd required events to cancel. They were the first, helping lead the way at a significant cost to themselves, but for the benefit of each of us. And they did it again just this month. The COVID Cultural Commissioning Fund helped support the most creative amongst us so they could still paint, dance, sculpt, and sing. We need the spirit that they bring. United Way and the Idaho Community Foundation Fund has provided over $1.3 million to trusted organizations and local communities, helping low-income and vulnerable Idahoans affected by the crisis. And City of Good is a homegrown initiative created by Boise businesses and civic organizations to keep restaurants working when they were closed with the purpose of providing meals to those in need. It's a program that will live on long after the pandemic that inspired its creation has become a memory. This is just a glimpse into the amazing partnerships that have come out of these very trying times. There are countless stories of individuals and institutions who rose to the challenge, too many to name, all of whom provided food, shelter, childcare, encouragement, and everything we've grown to expect from this great community that is Boise. We will recover, but we know history isn't a straight line and neither will be our recovery. Things will get better, then tougher, and then better again. We need each other. And throughout, recovery depends on us staying true to who we are and who we've been over the last few months. Maintaining focus on the importance each of us places on our families and our community. Recognizing that the way we live our lives has changed and will remain changed. We have to have patience with uncertainty and we have to address the challenges that our community members were facing before this, laid so much more bare for all of us to see by the economic crisis that ensued. How do we move forward? Well, we already are. We convened an economic recovery task force to chart the economic opportunities and deep vulnerabilities that COVID-19 exposed in our city. They created a clear course of action with the well-being of our residents and businesses at the forefront, including our focus on protecting health, investing in education, supporting small businesses, and partnering to address the workforce of the future. Our small businesses have been hit particularly hard and not enough of you received grants from the federal government. That's why we're providing $1.5 million in grant money to help you through these difficult times. We partnered with the Ada County Highway District and Downtown Boise Association to expand patios and create parklets to give small businesses space to make a living safely. And we'll continue to accept new ideas. The central promise I made to Boiseans last year was that I would listen, I would hear you out, and I would not be afraid to try new things. And now more than ever, we must. Despite all these hardships, the bedrock of our economy is strong. More businesses have contacted us about relocating here this year in the middle of the crisis than last year. The lure of our trails, the certainty of our vision, and our community's strength has become a clarion call that not even a pandemic can silence. We will convert these inquiries into more economic opportunities for our residents. All workers deserve to be paid enough to live a good life in our community and will invest in an economy that ensures this. That good life requires a home that each of us can afford. And as more people join our community, more bedrooms, more bathrooms, more kitchens are needed. Housing's not a them problem, it's an us problem. Prices are going up. People are willing to pay top dollar to live in our community, but we must ensure that we don't price out of the market the very people that make this community great. To increase the number of affordable homes in our community, we're investing in a housing land trust it supports the development of various housing types, allowing for home ownership and rental opportunities for income restricted families. We've announced a zoning rewrite committee made up of neighborhood leaders, developers, housing experts, and most importantly, Boiseans. They'll help us protect what we love about this place and ensure that our zoning code reflects the value we place on providing everyone in Boise a home they can afford 
with access to opportunities that will support their families. And those that are without a roof over their heads shouldn't be left out in the cold. We recently opened the doors of Valor Point to help ensure that no one who served and prepared to die for our country should be forced to live on the street. Our veterans should never be ignored and should never be left without a place to sleep. I know what's in it for them, honor, service, and morality. They deserve nothing less in return. We've been rethinking how we connect people to services. We asked our IT team to move mountains and they have as they migrated services online. We kept libraries like this one open with curbside pickup. And for those who couldn't access the internet or the web wouldn't work for them, we opened limited services at City Hall. We created a street outreach team that connects people on the street with the services they need, meeting them directly where they are. Your government has been innovating every day. We'll ensure that everyone has access to the services they need the way they need it. In the last six months, we found permanent houses for 62 families and are in the process of housing another 32. We're working tirelessly to lift people out of homelessness as quickly as possible and as permanently as possible because we know the impact it will have not just on that family, but on all of us. We're committed to ensuring that those shared dreams held by every person in Boise, a good job, a place to live, and a safe community will never be put on pause. And we're accomplishing all of this while working from home, physical distancing, and wearing our masks. I'm excited to see what we can do next with all the innovations and lessons we've learned. And I'm grateful for these new tools because we've also been called to face perhaps the greatest challenge of our lifetime, the climate crisis. It's undeniable. And like the pandemic, it won't go away if ignored. It just gets worse. Our days are getting hotter. Our forests are burning. We're the generation that must solve this for our children and theirs. Our health and our economy depends on us doing this now. Boise will be a climate innovation leader and not just because we want to, but because we must. We can, we should, and we will rise to the challenge of this moment. As the world changes, we'll be poised to reap the benefits of clean energy cheaper and more plentiful power, healthier air, new jobs made possible by the transition to keep our economy strong, to ensure our children have the opportunities that our parents did. To be smart and efficient, we established a climate action division. These folks are leading the way. We know that climate will touch every aspect of our lives and our city government. No division is independent of this endeavor, and that's why we'll tackle it as a unified group. No department will be a silo. No department will be exempt. We will make sure that our residents thrive in the long run with good jobs, clean air, and clean water. We'll tackle every issue through this lens with people and opportunity at the center of our work. Our goals are both ambitious and necessary. We'll have 100% clean electricity for all by 2035, and I'm proposing we do all we can to beat that goal. We'll also set a carbon neutral goal for our city government by 2035. This pass won't just lead to survival, but to great jobs, better infrastructure, and more equity throughout our city. We are going to blaze a path to carbon neutrality with our city operations, and then apply those lessons learned to set an aggressive community goal. And as we move closer to our goals, we will become healthier and we'll ensure that those who often suffer the brunt of climate impacts share in the benefits. We'll ensure that all of Boise is equal when it comes to health and climate. The tools to meet our goals are in high demand throughout the world. And as we innovate techniques here, we'll be able to export them, building a sustainable, clean, and thriving economy. In fact, environmental journalists just hosted a virtual conference right here in our city last week to look at what we're doing. And if all goes well, they'll arrive in person next June to see firsthand. I envision a Boise where everyone can go outside without choking on smoke. One where we get to our good paying jobs without paying for gas that's causing us harm. One where water is plentiful and clean and where food is abundant and available to everyone. It's the same Boise we all want. It's the Boise our children and grandchildren deserve. 
We're also going to do simple things that make all the difference. Plant trees. They clean air, make our neighborhoods walkable, and provide a nice shady place to read a library book. Some things are just common sense and planting trees is one of them. That's why under the leadership of Council President Clegg, we're going to plant over 100,000 trees in the next 10 years. And there's another challenge that this year we've been called to face. A problem that's gone unaddressed for way too long. Racism. Systemic racism has hurt too many people across this country, this state, and yes, this city. I know it's uncomfortable to talk about, but I also know that like the virus and climate change, it will not go away if we ignore it. The impact of systemic racist policies has been passed down to us and our generation must undo the harm and strengthen our community through it. Our state has a troubled record on race. We've seen housing discrimination, profiling of communities of color, and an Aryan nation's compound that existed for far too long. These are facts, even if we'd like them not to be, but we've shown again and again that we'll stand against this. This centuries long problem won't be solved in a training or a series of conversations. It requires an ongoing commitment that I'm making to those who call Boise home. Together, we will honor our differences and bring forth a diverse community that celebrates each person's inherent humanity. Cities that honor differences thrive. Societies that cherish diversity are historically more innovative, more successful, safer, and yes, they have better, higher paying jobs. It's just common sense. Boise, that's where we are. Those are the challenges and we will get through them. And I know we will be successful. Many people ask how I can be so sure. And I often think of the students we've seen marching on our Capitol in the last few years, sometimes walking out of school, demanding more from those of us that can to impact climate, public safety, education, opportunity. They've demonstrated a deep sense of connection to each other, to this community and to our country. They understand that we must act now. They offer solutions, challenge us in the immediacy of the moment and shine moral clarity on our disillusioned politics. They do it again and again and again. I know when I receive a letter from Aubrey, a second grader with suggestions on how our city could help protect restaurant workers and our residents who frequent them. When a third grader shows up in my office, hoping to talk with me about local government and throughout the conversation and through her mask, she giggles as she says with certainty that someday she'll work in this office to make our community better. Our children tell us things we should already know. Kids should feel safe in school. Women should be treated the same as men. Climate change is an existential threat. Teachers are essential and black lives matter. They embody the exceptionalism Americans aspire to and remind us that we must do more. Their dreams are for all of us. When people ask how I remain so optimistic, I wonder with what's happening around us and seeing the sea of their faces in my mind, how could I not be? Together, our community will tackle these challenges and our story will tell it. I know years from now, we'll return to this library, we'll take a book from the shelf and read about this moment. We'll learn that we did not lose our way, that we didn't lose the soul of the city we loved. And instead we protected each other and this place. We made progress and charted a future that enabled our kids and theirs to find the opportunities we had. The pages will tell stories of your actions, how we didn't just survive, but we thrived. Thinking back again on that first time I saw our city, newly married and with a mind full of expectations, I knew that this was the place for us. I didn't know what was next, but Scott and I, like so many of you, felt called here. We found people who welcomed us, opportunities to build the life we dreamed of, and purpose and common cause to protect this place we fell in love with. It's that simple, yet so universal. Each of us wants a community to create, a home, a life here in this special place. And now more than ever, we must come together intent on ensuring that the future we share, that we create for our children, includes those same opportunities that each of us enjoyed. 
I intend to fight like hell with each of you, Boise, and together we will pen the pages of a new book about a healthy, prosperous, and welcoming city for everyone. Thank you. Good night. Take care and be well.